Hello, it's Stefan from the IMU team. I'm here to give a very, very well, warm welcome to Christophe Debarge, who uh, is now a seasoned IMU presenter. I was uh, lucky enough to see his uh, IMU 15 session on blocks to enhance learner experience. And I'm already excited to find out what he's got to say about Moodle and corporate language training. So I'll hand over to you and uh, wish us all uh, a very enjoyable and uh, informative session. Thank you very much, Stefan. So my name is Christophe Debarge. I'm based in uh, Brussels in Belgium. I'm from uh, France, the northern part of France, so not too far from, uh, from Belgium. I've been uh, working in um, various uh, contexts, mainly teaching French for a while, and then I switched to the learning management. And uh, I'm working with Moodle since uh, four or five years now, mainly in uh, business context with uh, corporate training and uh, that's true that it's one context that is not often uh, uh, covered in iMoot or into the Moodle world let's say so let me give you a few words by why did I choose that presentation about attendance and how to use Moodle to support face-to-face -face training I'm sure it's true to cooperate, but in many contexts, that uh, low attendance rate of uh, students uh, bring a lot of frustration from the trainer side, but also from the learner side, and in our case, in a corporate world, in the client side. And uh, it uh, brings a lot of uh, tensions. And as early as 2004, I was trainer, and uh, I had that problem. We were giving French courses at, the, at uh, the European Commission, and we realized we had a lot of uh, uh, absences, and it was difficult, especially with language training, to keep uh, to keep the uh, progress uh, uh, constant because people were showing up half an hour late, or maybe one hour late, or maybe for two class they were not showing up, and when they come back they were a bit lost. So as early as 2004, I start to use blog to teach, and um, slowly we uh, switched to uh, Moodle. Why to face many of these challenges? Uh, low attendance rate, also lack of time to prepare courses because they are adult learners, they are really busy with their work, they are really busy with uh, their family life, and they don't have time to commit to uh, their training, which can be different. I'm sure, uh, Carlos, if you um, provide courses at the Royal Conservatory of Music, the people might be more invested in their uh, training. Uh, and also, here the trouble in uh, language training in a corporate context is that the language training is not often the priority on the agenda and uh, the investment is also quite limited sometimes by the learners. So we, five or six years ago, we started to think about how we could use uh, Moodle and to bring some uh, kind of dynamism and also uh, how we can, could change our approach a bit to um, be sure that people were uh, keeping in touch with their training but also we didn't want to enter into the kind of blended uh, approach we wanted to have like let's say the first step uh, to our blended uh, training which means we cannot expect all learners to spend two or three hours a week online to do some study and come back in class ready so we had to find a middle way and for that we took inspiration about the flipped classroom methodology. Are you familiar with that uh, approach? Maybe uh, Carlos or Marie France? Maybe just uh, you can just use the chat and to, to answer the, the questions. So usually the, the normal class, let's say it's a face-to-face -face class, and then after you've got some homework, which can be done on paper or sometime online. Not really. Yeah. So the uh, flipped classroom is just the opposite, which means um, before the face-to-face -face class, people are supposed to do some kind of passive skills uh, activities online, maybe watching a lecture, kind of uh, uh, reading some text or doing some uh, preparation, and then they arrive in class prepared. And so we switch the, um, the class, the preparation for the class is done before, and then uh, during the face-to-face -face more like activities about consolidation, about maybe workshops, something more, much more pragmatic. So applied to language training, 
keeping in mind that we cannot expect our learners to spend hours and hours of uh, work online before going to their face-to-face -face course. We uh, precede all the face-to-face -face with some small, sharp, sh short uh, activities online, kind of preparation that will help delegates to uh, get ready to come to their face-to-face. -face. But also, if we think about absences, when people are too busy, maybe going on a mission one week, they could use that uh, online preparation to catch, catch up with uh, their training. I will uh, present you a few um, scenarios, and we use really basic Moodle uh, activities, such as the forum, the RSS feed, or the glossary. Why? Because everybody knows forum uh, in Moodle or outside Moodle, it doesn't change much. But also a lot of training and support is available and we don't need any expertise because it's true that if we need to train the, the trainer and expect from them a lot of uh, uh, training to get uh, uh, trained enough to, to work with Moodle can be uh, complex. And also in, in terms of budget, because there is no de development fee it's all, all the support you need is available uh, within Moodle. So that makes the things quite easy to do. So I will uh, go through three scenarios just to show you how we can um, make the situ how we can use Moodle. Again, is to support the face-to-face -face training. It's not a blended approach at all. Well, not, not fully blended, but just like using the technology, Moodle technology to be sure that people are aware of what will they do into uh, their face-to-face -face class. And also in order to avoid um, if somebody is uh, not present one day in a class, sometimes they, the, that might be one reason they're not really motivated into the next classroom because they feel they are a bit lost. So using Moodle can help people to stay motivated also participate in the class, but also at the long term, if you've got course of semester, maybe six months, it can reduce, and we've got good figures on that, can reduce the dropout rate, which means people with that approach will have more uh, tendency to come back even after two or three weeks of uh, uh, absences. So let's talk about that uh, uh, forum, how we use the forum for course preparation notes. That's quite a, a basic uh, approach. It means that before the class, the trainer go into the forum and share with the delegates the course objectives, a small task of preparation, which could be between five and 20 minutes. It's a good ratio. It could be as easy as a video to watch, a text to read, some quiz, or maybe even a lesson. What is the advantage of uh, having that approach? It, first, you receive the email. If you post into the forum, you will receive the email with the link to the video. It doesn't cost much in terms of time to uh, do the task, but also it's one way to get people motivated to show up in the class because uh, we ask a trainer to find some quite uh, creative material and uh, inspiring. And we hope that if they watch a, a nice video about a theme that uh, might uh, ring a bell for them, they will come into the classroom much more motivated to participate. And um, also for people maybe a bit uh, shy to speak in a foreign language, it will, especially if, if you're providing lessons to, let's say, management people uh, that are often to, the boss in their own language, but when they start to learn to, to talk in, into a foreign language, they uh, lose control of their skills and they start to be a bit less uh, confident in their, their um, skill, communication skills. So if they can prepare, they will be much more uh, willing to participate in the classroom. So basically the trainer before the classroom, maybe two or three days before the classroom, post uh, the uh, uh, prep uh, email with the course objective, the task, and maybe some recommendation for the class. Then comes the face-to-face -face class, just normal face-to-face -face class, and there is nothing different that you need uh, to, uh, to do. And after the class, you can still give some uh, homework, which could be online via Moodle, or could be just paper-based if you're using a book. We realized that uh, with that email sent before each lesson, people really arrived in class. At least 
they know exactly what will be done during the day, so uh, they are at least more willing to participate. And also, you will see that for the attendance, if it's a long term, that helps uh, people to keep uh, motivated because basically they remember they have a class this week. Sometimes it can be as easy as that uh, uh, because they've got busy schedule. Having that mail saying, oh yeah, I've got class tomorrow, I need to, uh, to, to prepare and not to forget to arrive earlier in the office. So the forum, easy to use, and for the trainer, it's not really different of what they are doing because they need to prepare the, their class anyway. So the only difference now is that they need to post it into the forum. So it's uh, really one click. The second scenario, it's still to use the forum, but maybe here a bit differently, it's to use it afterward. Why? Because uh, we are dealing with course of 10 or 12 people and Every week there are one or two or three people uh, absent and uh, they, um, they want to keep track with their training. So we used to um, just waiting that the delegate send a mail to the trainer, maybe asking the question. And here we've, we've got a much more proactive approach. So after each lesson, there is a post into the forum with course notes. It could be as easy as a picture of the board. Uh, you know, sometimes trainers, they don't have time. They, they are rushing from one course to another. So with the smartphone we've got now, the quality of the picture is quite good. So you could just take the picture of the board, maybe writing a few key examples and uh, offering some consolidation activity. Again, that's quite uh, good for people who are in class because they've got uh, the, their notes, but also uh, it reduces the dropout rate a lot because people who were absent, they know what has been covered during the class. They don't have any excuse saying, oh yeah, I was feeling lost. And uh, we realized that this scenario, if it's combined with scenario one, it's even more efficient, which means before the class, you receive a mail with a preparation task. And after the class, you receive a small uh, mail with the course note, which could be just a picture and uh, maybe uh, some text with key examples. So the combination of the two, it's quite uh, efficient and uh, people quite light, like the, to have the course note uh, also. It could be summed up in one, in one post, uh, of course. Uh, it could be just one mail with the course notes and also the prep of the next class. It's up to you to, uh, to decide which one is more convenient. The third uh, scenario is to use um, still the forum, but uh, here for a weekly collaborative preparation task. And here we really want to uh, make people feel obliged to, to come, not because they like you as a trainer, but uh, because their colleague are doing some preparation and they want to, to, to uh, feel uh, committed to, to their colleagues, so they, they will show up uh, much more. So basically, you cannot expect to have everybody every week to uh, prepare uh, something online, but what we are using, and we think it's working quite well, it's every week somebody is in charge of one task uh, online. Could be as easy as preparing a small debate. We're dealing with language training. But uh, we are using also that in a legal context where we teach uh, legal uh, English. And uh, what's done, it's more about case study, for example. So it's, you can be really creative uh, with that. But th the important thing is to have one learner as a moderator, which means every week somebody is in charge of uh, the, the training. So you will choose a text, maybe a small video, and you will ask a question to his colleague online. Again, should be between 5 and 20 minutes, uh, the task for the other learners. And then during the class, you can focus on active skills and maybe starting the discussions, asking your, uh, the, the moderator why he chose that topic, asking why he chose that video and launch the discussion with that. We realize really that um, because uh, learners are really uh, more uh, keen to join uh, a debate if it's the colleague uh, who started the uh, topic that's uh, working quite well. Again, the limitation is not to be too exigent and not ask the uh, delegate to, to spend too much time uh, preparing uh, uh, every week, five to 20 minutes. That's all you can get into a corporate uh, context. People don't have time to do much more. Do you... Uh, 
Marie, do you teach also or do you use Moodle in a professional context in corporate world or is it uh, also in a more university or school? Okay, so it's for civil servant uh, kind of uh, training you're doing. Okay. Actually, we've, we we we're working. We use that in the context of the European Commission and Parliament uh, when we deliver training and to uh, to um, people really uh, quite busy people, and uh, it worked really well. They were quite uh, receptive. The only trouble we had at the beginning of that people were it was quite new for them, uh, and they were thinking it would be like a bl really blended or e-learning course. Then after a while, they realized that uh, it's just really having a, a platform to support their their face to face. Uh, it's just uh, for us, of course, you can have a different approach, but for us, it was to expl we explained them the purpose of that uh, approach, and they were quite uh, receptive. And uh, they also like to um, to be uh, asked for what kind of activities they could do, because they want to have really customized training to to their need. That's why I will uh, talk a bit about the uh, glossary, and uh, uh, end up with uh, how we use the glossary. Uh, I really like the glossary in Moodle. Huh? It's quite easy to to use, and uh, we use it, of course, for vocabulary learning and uh, concept uh, checking. But we've been using it a lot too for kind of collaborative uh, uh, task. We use it just to um, ask the learners basically what theme they would like to uh, develop in class. Because, for example, sometimes we do some French lessons at really high level, and we've got people from different uh, uh, backgrounds. And we want to be sure that we cover all the theme that would be uh, pertinent to their context. So we are using the uh, course glossary and we ask each delegate as the first task in the course to pro propose to offer a theme that they would like to develop in class. That way uh, it's a good uh, tool for um, trainers to get uh, their material easily and also to get their inspiration. But we think it's also a good way to uh, invest the learner in their training and hoping that will help to keep them motivated and to uh, motivate them to come uh, more into the class, uh, at least regularly. Also, uh, with some uh, topics, we've got a lot of uh, uh, concept already inside the glossary. So we can ask uh, learners just to go and uh, search within the glossary what kind of activity they would like to do, and we ask them to uh, ask their trainer to use that material and fi finally we ask uh, uh, also uh, when it's really specific context we ask uh, all delegates to suggest authentic material so we use the uh, glossary to upload that material we could use the database also but uh, we realize for trainers it's much more difficult to use the database than the glossary so we use that also to share uh, material and we believe that if the learner bring their own material in class in order to uh, work really in with their emails, their text or their uh, uh, conference that will motivate them much more. And when we deal with uh, adult learners in a professional context, they really appreciate that effort. And uh, we cannot ask all, all, all trainers to do it without uh, really some uh, kind of uh, online support. So we think glossary could be a good uh, a good way also uh, to 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 do that. Do you guys use the glossary often? F for uh, more creative uh, stuff or for like the basic vocabulary or concept? Because here, now we've been using our basic, we've been using the glossary for a while now, it's been five years already. 
And it's incredible now all the materials we've got within two or three sessions, especially for the authentic material. We ask all the time the uh, okay for reference. It's, it's good too, and we use it uh, that way too. But to build uh, a kind of database of uh, content activity or suggestions of learners, it's wonderful because now every time we've got a new trainer, we've got four or five glossaries to give him access to. Sometimes they don't want to share it with their learners, that's fine, but at least they've got some uh, reference material where they can go and pick up authentic material or for activity we, we use, of course, we do language training. So role play is quite an important element and it's not always easy for trainers to get inspiration or maybe to have time to prepare role plays. And we've got some... Yeah, 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 of course, that's what we do. Huh? We use the uh, glossary, uh, the course glossary, and then we share it with uh, for global site glossary. So there are two options. Either we do a global site glossary so everybody can have access to, through the glossary thanks to the uh, blog. Uh, what the name of the blog again? Random glossary entry, which means in each course, I will, I will add a screenshot in, in into the um, presentation uh, space that we can have a look but basically they've got uh, access to the glossary uh, within their course and they can click on the button button all entry and they can have access to the main glossary but also what we do sometimes if we've got one trainer for legal english we will give him the backup of uh, the glossary from another course that way we be shared only with his uh, students it, and also he can work with it as he want and that way we don't touch also uh, before we moderate uh, all the material because that's all one issue we could have with giving access to everybody to the main glossary if we allow them to add their own entry sometimes you can have uh, suggestions that are not really appropriate or you could have like authentic material which is maybe sensitive to share with everybody that's why we try to always have like one local glossary for a trainer. We give him all the material we've got that has been moderated already. And then at the end of the session, we check all the new entry he has made. And if they are fitting or expectations, we add them into the main glossary and into the backup, which means next trainer coming will benefit from this. And also that's also good because sometimes trainers, they are not really willing to share some uh, material and we can do some uh, uh, we can tell them, okay, could you maybe in the 10 activities suggest may share two or three of us and you keep uh, the priority on the others. So it's a way also to keep uh, control. The last uh, tool we are using, it's the RSS. And the RSS, we use it also uh, to keep uh, delegates motivated and to invest them into their training, which means most of the time, all trainers don't just, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, feed the delegate with some material, but they have the responsibility to go and dig and search for some text or interesting videos. But we realize if we let the learners to go into uh, Google and search for whatever they want, we will end up with uh, some either material that is not really appropriated or which is not of good quality, or maybe of a level too high or too low for the rest of the group. So we use the RSS to provide learners with some recurrent resources, but we keep the control about uh, the, the feed. That way, uh, we're sure that if they go into that uh, RSS feed that we know well, that the material will be of good quality, that the theme would be into our expectations, let's say, and also that uh, the delegate won't spend uh, time preparing with some material that is uh, useless for the rest of uh, the, the class. So a lot of time, every week, there is one delegate uh, in charge of uh, searching the RSS feed. We use the block, huh? we use the block uh, RSS feed plus, and uh, all trainers, they've got the list of RSS feed available into their field, and uh, then uh, they can choose whatever RSS feed they want, and it can change from one week to another to bring some variety. How it increase the attendance uh, using the RSS? Because you put responsibility into the learner, 
And also the other colleagues, they know that one colleague will present into the classroom. So, you know, when it's when they are in their office and when they're thinking, oh, should I go to the class today or not? They had the reminder that the colleague is presenting a topic that might interest them. So it's one way to put a carrot instead of, uh, I forget what, how we say the baton uh, in, uh, in English, but anyway, it's a way to, to uh, help them get motivation. A stick. Exactly, uh, because we realize the stick is not always uh, enough, uh, but uh, having a nice uh, topic and also making the training convivial and imply all your colleagues uh, can make the uh, difference. Do you have any question uh, with uh, the three scenario I uh, presented with the forum and also a kind of creative way of using the forum and uh, the glossary? You can use the uh, uh, chat or put your mic on. It's up to you. Exactly, because, you know, we I don't know what kind of uh, training you want to uh, give, but all training are really pragmatic training, language training, we want them to talk. So, it's difficult to talk when you have nothing to say. So if you give them some material beforehand, quick, sharp, small videos, they'll be uh, they'll be quite motivated to to participate. And really, we we can see that in the classroom, even uh, in quite difficult language such as Chinese or Arabic, that make uh, really the difference. And there is material available in any. I mean, RSS feed you can find uh, good feeds in almost anything now. Uh, Okay, if, if you don't have any more questions for now, I will, I'll uh, let you go. But I want to remind you that we've got a forum into the uh, uh, in our Moodle course. If you think about another question uh, afterward, feel free to uh, feed uh, the uh, forum. And I will uh, also, over the weekend, uh, add uh, a few examples and uh, a sum up of uh, the two uh, to discussions. Sure, next time we do it in French, that will be much easier for me and uh, much better for you here. O lo hacemos en español, Carlos, como, como tú quieres. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend and uh, enjoy the next uh, sessions you'll watch. Thank you very much. Bye. Hello, Stefan again. Hi, just, Stefan. Just, just quickly to say a huge, huge thank you, Christoph. That was very, very lightning. Um, I'm a language uh, guy myself, so I found this really, really interesting. <laughs> and, um, much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice uh, night for you now. And you. Bye. Bye.